Good luck. All right, this is the final part of the best of three finals in All American Summer Shogi. This is it for all the marbles. Let me boost my volume just a little bit here. So, um, how shall we play this? Again, we're going to stick with our favorite uh, way of playing games. Even if it's just a bit complicated. Um, I'm going to tuck the king out of this. Okay. Okay. Well... Well, I see how it is. How crazy am I feeling? Pretty crazy, to be honest. Um, let's do it. Here we go. Generally speaking, you would keep this vanguard pawn solidified in the center and not worry about this sort of concern. But this way I can increase the pressure on my opponent's position. Um, let's actually develop the bishop out this way. Just unorthodox, but why not, right? If the idea is that I want the silver to move so I can promote here, well, um, this encourages the silver to move, but then I promote. So it's kind of hard for them to defend this point. The other thing that occurred to me is that this bishop is rifling down this diagonal and this rook is pointing this way. I was concerned that this rook pawn might advance again. Um, so yeah. I'm addressing this rook pawn advancement by being ready to move my bishop. Check the overlay. Overlay looks fine. Right, so they have to defend the center point once more. So they've built a, a rather fun castle. Um, but it seems necessary. Now if I push... I wonder how they address that. If I push, I think they take the left silver. Which still seems to lock them in place a bit. If they take with the right silver, I'd redrop this to go either in front of the bishop or back. Um, also, I could open this diagonal now that the bishop's hanging. That looks interesting. But I have a weakness to attend to here. Or to tend to here. Alright, so we're going to defend the head of my king. So all four of these pawns are defended. There's no immediate bishop drop breaking my position. Next we open the diagonal, exploiting this being not defended. Um, 
unless we sack the pawn. No, I think we take here now. And offer a bishop exchange. Which normally would favor Ibisha, a static rook player. But we have a different position than you would normally have. So, a couple ideas here. Um, one is that I'm exploiting this being not defended and giving my bishop somewhere to go. Two is that I'm prepared for bishop drops, and they might not be as prepared as they want to be. Three is I could actually drop the vanguard pawn back in um, pretty easily. Or if they try to put a vanguard pawn, I can harass it. Or actually, I could just straight up take it. Um, so, well, taking it's risky. Taking it, I'd be giving my rook for a bishop at some point. Which does not seem worth it, but I could harass it, and then, after they defend it, take that, and then attack the pinned piece. So, um, yeah, I could force bishop exchange. And... If bishops exchange, then I'm ready to harass this corner, which has no silver to defend it. Yes, yeah, so they're defending here. Which seems like a reasonable thing to do. Um, Okay, I could hem in this knight by pushing the third foul pawn again. Um, hmm. I debate, should I take this vanguard pawn? It seems useful, but my active rook seems useful too. Oh, I could advance the bishop and then bring up the knight, but nothing's going to defend this point. Um... Finding good, flexible moves is hard.
Finding good flexible moves that don't also expose me to this devastating attack is challenging. So lifting the rook and then attacking this point um, would invite the skull forward. And while I do like break up his castle a little bit, it's just not that useful. Potentially moving the third foul pawn might have been the right move. I don't know. Yeah, because this knight is always troubling. Um, wait, hang on. This is interesting. We're going to expose my bishop a little bit, cut off its support, but also allow me to use a piece effectively. Um, We might be uh, switching to playing opposing rook in just a second. I had a dense moment. We both had a dense moment just a second ago. Um, I wonder if I'm going to get a second chance. I wasn't thinking about every tactical possibility here. Uh, because had I been thinking about that, probably... Hmm... This looks so, so stretched out. This looks like this position could break at any second.
dissatisfying that I don't have mates. Like seemingly, I, my opponent is skinning, skidding on the thinnest of thin ice here. But yeah, I do not see a mate. I mean, this really begs the question, doesn't it? Surely, this begs the question. All right, what's the answer? I need to know now. What's going on in this position? I couldn't solve this last turn. And Dancing my pieces around is only going to achieve so much here. I don't know about this.
got all the violence we were looking for this game, but I'm not sure that this how sound this is. Spent a lot of time looking at this the past few moves, but I just don't know.
Yeah, I don't know whether a knight dropped to hit something, or maybe this might be more accurate. Um, I didn't expect a retreat. This is confusing. Hmm. I think this is better than taking the lance. I think it's also better than this night drop check. Sanjubio 
40秒So now we take this. Thank you. That's impulsive. There were other things I could have done. Yeah, I'm not happy with it. I mismanaged my time. And so now I suffer. My move was pretty terrible. Well, huh. Always look on the bright side of life. There's a song about that. It's a cheerful little ditty. Um. I don't know what I'm thinking. All right, I'm going to get myself a dragon. And here, they're pretty cool. There's one small timing problem here. And that's that they get this in first. Um, one small timing problem that just like completely undercuts my entire attack.
next I'll be hearing that these pieces have values or something like that. Um, that's not how this game went, but in general, uh, yeah. For the longest time I was thinking of just leaving the bishop here, trying to bring up the knight to promote where the bishop was. And then I thought, hey, I can take this lance and this looks fine. And here we are. So confused. Shogi's hard. If I'm imagining things correctly, this position's okay. And by that, I mean their king needs to run. And if it doesn't run right now, this game ends. So I was imagining a horse takes gold, followed by a knight drop here. Which, at face value, looks hard to defend. It still looks right. What I'm unsure of is my next move here. Got a couple ideas.
It's looking like the simplest idea is the best. Although it's slow. I don't know. On the one hand, I want to advance this knight. On the other, a rook drop in many different places could be interesting. I'm assuming they defend the immediate threat. Yeah, so this puts the gold down in this fun location. Sanjudio I failed, but it'll be okay. It really should have been a mate. Could not find it. Sanjudio 
Wow. They read better than I do. Also, there's a weakness with that move. Man. Just once, it'd be nice to be at the cool kids' table delivering the awesome mates. But I need to learn to read better than this. I misplayed my attack. I misplayed my attack. Well, I still have something, but it could have been so much more. Oh, they believe me. Okay. They saw something I didn't. Sanju
My plan next is Knight takes form. Although Lance drop here looks reasonable for attack and defense too. Also, Rook drop on their back rank could potentially just instantly win. Um, no, Lance drop in the center looks insanely strong here. The question is if a Rook drop is even stronger. No, we start with the light pieces and then attack with heavier pieces afterward. That's how we attack. Sanjudio This means they can't put a pawn on the back row. Oh, they could put a knight on the back row, can't they? <sighs> Shogi's hard. This isn't me showing off. This is me being dumb. That said, maybe I have a mate accidentally here. If knight drop, rook takes. I just don't see it. 
Yeah, it's legal. Um, our dragon takes, silver takes, gold drop. No, they take here. Um, It's just me being a dummy. This could be worse. This could be a lot worse. I'm hallucinating a lot of things here. Um, I didn't think the silver up protected as many things as it does. <sighs> I am hallucinating so much. Yeah, how about that? Um, well, I might accidentally still have control of all of this, believe it or not. I wouldn't believe it, but maybe. But yeah, by the narrowest of margins, I seem to still be pressing some kind of an attack. Um, the idea is if this silver moves up, I can drop my gold here and get a one space gap dragon. But that doesn't mate. Does enable me to take the knight and continue attacking, but it's not mate. Also, I could bring up the knight to defend the dragon, but then bishop takes knight or something stupid's gonna happen. So.
30秒40秒This is not my finest moment. I mean, the attack seems to work, but it's just so marginal. But, yeah, games are judged by their outcome. Character is judged by how you play the game. Long last, there's our one space gap dragon. So next we drop a general on the head here. And three generals and a dragon should mate. Two generals and a dragon should mate. Thanks for the game. Oh, one roller coaster after another. Wow. Okay. Oh, that was something. Lots and lots of sharp moments. Yeah, so, okay, if they take here, I'll try to zoom in on the board. Uh, yeah, so there's this. Did I have some other? No, I think that's what I planned, I think. Um, oh, hang on. I guess we're going back to the beginning. That's cool. Yeah, that was, that was an adventure for all of us. Even the spectators. It's going to tell him joy dinner, see around, and so forth. Holy moly. What a finals. Yeah, so my strategy of stick with what you've been playing, and this is what lately I've been playing the most, seems to have been the best strategy. Our opponent was very well prepared for third foul rook and fourth foul rook, and so... We played this thing that we've been doing on Shogi Wars for quite some time. 
uh, Central Fall Rook, even though I don't play it perfectly. Um, I have a lot to learn. I figured as a practical strategy to try to win the match, this was the thing to aim for. And yet by this position, this was sharp. I, I, this is a new position for me. I've always heard about this Ibisha tax and how it's important to prevent this move, but that's in different positions. That's not this specific position where it's important to prevent this. So I might have overextended myself here. Maybe. Uh, one alternative I considered was this. And so um, if they do this, now king up to protect the knight is not available. Um, but my rook is like extremely prone and probably dead. So, well, no, the drop upon I take, knight takes, it's like very painful. So I don't think that pawn moves the answer either. Um, at this or this at various points might be of some interest. I don't know. But yeah. Um, oops, sorry, I meant to hit the forward button. So yeah, we sacrifice the rook. You know how I like my rooks. If I'm sacrificing a rook, something is up in the position. But yeah, we sacked a rook and uh, sacrificed... Um, oh, just a rook. Okay, I thought I sacrificed more. We got a knight for a rook. But they also have a silver in hand. This is, generally speaking, a very bad exchange. But um, circumstances of the position are like, hello, I'm attacking, and I can drop a knight and take the lance, so I get a, a knight. Well, I get the knight in the corner, which is not that useful, but I get a lance, and the lance might be useful. I have a pawn. This is pretty speculative as things go. But they have to move the rook. They give me one turn to try something, so they move the rook. I'm not actually sure if moving the rook's best. It probably is. If there's any way for Gota to survive this and move the rook, it's probably best. But I played this with the intent of trying to soften up their castle, and this gives them a move. And yeah, stuff I've been considering. Um, Stuff like this, where I'm just going to sacrifice the horse to get two pieces to attack with and be attacking this. So, yeah, this kind of defense is not merited. They have to, like, take this or move away or something. And they did move away. And I didn't see that they could do that. But this blocks the rook. And, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do here. Um, I think we've gone pretty far from the beaten path here. I wanted to bring this up, but as we saw in the game, moving the knight actually opens a space for the rook to drop, so it's probably not a good idea. So I should probably just take the lance or drop this knight, forcing the king toward the center. But I don't know. The king's actually kind of prone where it's at. So taking the lance might be best. And just hope that somehow there's some continuation for this attack. That, say if they do this, um, I don't know. Maybe something like that. Uh, engines will be able to verify whatever happened here. This silver drop, I didn't think... Well, I thought, like, if they were going to drop a silver, they would try to, like, build a castle in the corner. I didn't think they'd try to build a castle in the center of the board. I think they thought that I was going to try to trap the king here instead of just taking the lance. Because if I take the lance, they have this rook drop. And they might have been right that my pursuing this lance might have been a really poor idea. I don't know. Um, so I could, like, move here or there or something. 
as an alternative. But uh, taking a glance looked decent. Uh, this was extremely dicey. And maybe I should have just cooled off for one move and put something, like either probably move this gold. Probably that. But that loses a move on my attack. But then I get to save a gold. And that gold that they dropped was really instrumental to defending their king. But with the free move, they just start running. So I don't like it. Um, I guess I miss tactics here. Like, I don't know, I could put this... So if I drop this on the center fall, they could drop a pawn in front of it. If, unless I drop it, like, this far up the board. Then there's no pawn drop in front of the lance. And maybe this actually is powerful? Um, it looks decent. Yeah. So their king runs and... Um, I guess that gives them time for something like this. Maybe instead we do this. And I'm not sure how this resolves. This looks hard to figure out. So that's a possibility, I think. Um, anyway, the way the game proceeded, I did this... This is not improving the scope of the lance. This is me attacking in a tremendous hurry and not having any calm whatsoever. <laughs> um, a calmer move would have put the lance anywhere down here. Like, even there, that's fine. There's nothing's on fire, and you've got time to play this correctly. But, um... I insisted that we start exchanging pieces immediately. They take my gold, I take their gold. So, yeah, this lance drop is a bit ambitious. Um, there's stuff they can do here. So their rook re-enters the defense, but I take the center file, but what am I going to... Oh, wait, I have a knight drop there. But yeah, they could do stuff like this, and what am I doing? My lance looks pretty comical here. I'm not sure I have a next move. I mean, I could take time to do this, but um, yeah, my lance is gone. Well, then I could defend the lance this way, but still, like... Yeah, neither of us had much patience this game. So, lots of violence happened. Um, yeah, I don't, I didn't expect them to take the one gold. I expected them to get two pieces for the dragon. Uh, cause this bishop is quite sad. So, yeah, it would have made, in my mind, more sense for them to, like, take this silver. Um, that's just my imagination, but I mean, it can't be that bad, right? So, after they take twice, I'm not sure how they continue here. Honestly, it could just be that taking the gold, as extremely tempting as it is, is just mistimed. But yeah, they took... I get their dragon. They do this, which, yes, um, that's, that looks strong. Um, so I debated rook 6-1, but I don't think that works. Um, I guess another thing I'd consider briefly was uh, sacking the... Well, did I sack it? Yeah, I did. Um, so I don't think this works. 
I'm not sure what I would do here. I mean, I've defended my horse, which is entertaining. But, um, yeah, other rook drops might have been interesting, like out here. Um, so I was concerned about them retreating this gold, but I should have thought about this. That's probably the actual concern here. Because if I take this gold, they can do gold takes. And um, I'm not disrupting their castle this way. Yeah. Interesting. Um, maybe they didn't see this night drop. I don't know, but yeah, this looked forced to me. Um, hmm. and this whole position looked kind of scary. Um, and now, well, yeah, if they take time to take the silver now, my attack just speeds up. Uh, this rook drop is okay. Yeah, this retreat, I'm not sure. So, during the game I took the knight, because I couldn't work out the details of, um, what if I do this? Um, I tried this, if uh, king takes, I take here, and if this drop, then what? That's what's, oh, golly, Golly gumdrops. Oh. Ha. Huh. Well, okay. Um. Hmm. So, yeah. If they drop back here, we've got this beautiful silver drop. Um. Actually, wait. Gold drop. We want to have a gold and a silver. So they take here, we have a gold and a silver, and we just surround the king and made it somehow. Like, there's, it's not feasible for this king to escape. I, to quote uh, Skywalker, that's impossible. Um, but yeah. At this point, we just have this very powerful attack. I'm trying to reason where the mate is. Um, is this mates, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I see. So, during the game, I misread this, or rather, this direct gold drop back here is refuted by a piece drop to the head. Um, is it true that there's nothing they can do to defend this? Because that would be quite a claim. That would be a pretty extraordinary claim. So the benefit of gold 8-1 is that it would force the dragon to do something unless I had that sack here. But now if they drop this on 8-2, um, we can just power up their attack again. That doesn't seem right. What have I missed? Oh, the same tactic? Wait, is this so? How are we going to recycle this tactic? Okay. I guess we were recycling today. Uh, wait. Was it really this simple? So, um, what about this then? Oops, I'm sorry. Um, over here. 
King takes check. Okay, yeah, and then gold drop here, mate. All right, so seemingly, um, gold nine two is he she. Unless I've missed something fundamental here. Well, I'm sorry, there's this too. They don't have to dive into the corner. Um, at this point, we just take this knight like we did in the main line. So how does this contrast to what actually happened? In the game, we actually took a knight and didn't get this knight promoted over here. Not in the same way. And like here, there's this threat, there's this threat, but they probably defend. Um, and then we, I don't know, take here, threaten stuff, or just take the rook. I don't know. Um, but yeah, in the actual game, play proceeded with me taking the knight. They placed this in the corner. Um, probably not the right place to put it. For reasons we'll soon see. <laughs> yeah, um, during the game I regretted this move after playing it. Um, after the game, it seems to be okay, given what actually happened. Um, they have a bishop and a pawn in hand. So I was playing aggressively because I was afraid of pawn 5 1. And since. I don't know. Could I just take this? Instead of being fancy, what happens if I force this gold capture? And then we repeat this trick. Wait, so we've exchanged a knight for a lance is what's happened. But a lance can pin a gold, which renews this gold drop mate threat. Um, against that, I guess this might be a defense. Um, but yeah, what I'm trying to force is something like the game. But force the king into the corner. Or material loss. But yeah, I think here the king goes in the corner. And this is our familiar he, she. Um, like, you wouldn't expect there to be, like, certain death here, but it feels like they have to do something like this to protect the king. And we just take this gold. Or we just promote here and hit the silver and then take the gold next. I don't know. But yeah, this looks like our familiar mate threat ish sort of position. Is there actually a mate here? Um, I don't know. Probably. Um, wait, not that one. Well, maybe that one. Okay, this looks of some interest. Um, this is the most chess-like mating attack ever. Yeah, so this... Oh, but now he's going to put the knight on the same square the silver is on. I can't put two pieces on the same square. But yeah, if they do lance takes, um, this is mate. And if they don't do lance takes, this mates. So, okay. In fact, that gold drop is overkill. Yeah. So the lance drop does not hold this, despite being like the only piece that can defend this. It's just insufficient. Silver drop is he, she. 
Even with this rook defending, there's just no way out. Wow. Okay. So lots of fireworks. I played a very speculative attack this game. Um, and it worked out. Uh, yeah, this knight sack was over the top. So, in the actual game, they have a gold general here. Whereas that could have been... Um, that could have been in my hand instead of on the board. Had I played things smarter. Um, so yeah, finally take the rook because I just cannot find a mate. Our opponent is good at finding mates. I'm okay at finding mates. Um, but yeah, I take the rook just out of ideas. Here, what I wanted to do was sacrifice the dragon. Um, and then promote this and just try to continue attacking. But this promoting this doesn't actually increase the number of attackers. Well, I also considered, well, could I do something like this? Well, maybe. But I've given them a rook, and a rook could be kind of scary. So I just calmed out. Uh, this taking the pawn, this is too much. This is way... Well, I mean, they might be tanked anyway here. There might be no way out, but taking this pawn gives me a free move. So, um, yeah, just because I didn't have um, a checkmate doesn't mean I don't have like a brinkmate or something here. So I finally played the lance all the way down there, trying to just make sure I don't accidentally sack a rook and get mated. But this looks more interesting. I just could not figure this out. And during the game, I felt like I didn't need to understand this. Um, so yeah, they're attacking. They might sacrifice here, honestly. Their position is asking a lot of their pieces. I don't see a mate. I don't think they're anywhere near checkmating me, so this looks crushing, but I'm just concerned what if I miss something somewhere? I don't know, but no, this looks very strong, and I just, I don't know why I didn't do it. Uh, it invites them to do something sacrificial, whereas this invites this pawn drop, and now I never have to worry about this bishop ever again. In fact, I could go chasing the bishop and, like, try to win it. Uh, that's gratuitous, but... Um, yeah, I could take this lance for free. I could place the lance uh, on this head and continue the same attack. I thought about that. Ultimately, I settled on this and forgot that the knight could drop right there. And then we had sad times for a brief while. So we sacrificed a rook to get a gold, which it's not that big a sacrifice. Um, and more importantly, this is just opening up holes all over their king's side. So yeah, they have to defend this way. Um, I couldn't find mate here. That's fine, I think. It's okay if I don't spot every mate. But yeah, then this gold silver gets drawn forward. But um, yeah, if they take, then I get a one space gap dragon. If they don't take, it's mate, right? Yeah, it's mate in either direction, either here or there. So they have to take at this point. Wait, so all that's to say that this silver advance actually is the final like it allows me to do this gold drop and which actually has enough to mate um 
it's the move that could potentially hold their position together, but it gives up this very important square right next to the king. So, yeah, they've cut off their bishop. Their lance is blocked by this bishop. The silver and lance protect each other. I'm sorry, the silver and bishop protect each other here. Nothing's protecting this knight. So, yeah, this position just collapses. Um, better might have been shoring this up with a pawn. Which is possible, but loses the knight. So, yeah, the, they could put that there. They could put... I'm not sure where... I've been careful not to do knight takes pawn prematurely, because this would allow another pawn to defend their king and stop the thing that actually happened in the game. Um, so yeah, the pawn could go on file 6. And I'm not sure if defending the silver directly or like adding a pawn on 6-1, trying to slow this thing down. I'm not sure which is better. But yeah, their attack has come to a complete standstill. So they need to rekindle their attack somehow. And I just don't see a way to do that after this pawn drop. So I guess my most patient move of the game... Um, my most patient move is actually this one. And during the game I didn't like it, but I played it anyway. I wanted to find a way to checkmate them immediately, and I saw that if I did this, they could drop either a pawn or a knight in front of the lance, and it could serve as some kind of sacrifice. But if they dropped a knight, I could take the knight. Like, a knight would be useful for me to attack with, because I could like place it here and hit this gold and just keep moving forward. Oh, plus, I'm more afraid that their knight would be dropping over here to hit this. So, I saw they could put things in front of this bishop to protect the bishop. And I reasoned that, well, if they put this in front of the bishop, they're never going to push this pawn. So I'm safe. Um, yeah, then they played this knight, which seems to grab material. But also, like, seems like the only way to def Well, actually, yeah, this pawn drop prevents a pawn drop back here. So now, yeah, I'm able to collect the knight. Maybe I should have just done that. No, no, what I did was fine. What I did was A-OK. -okay. Um, what I could have done is maybe just take the knight here. Yeah, that's probably smarter. That knight ended up being a little bit of a thorn, but wait, what I actually did, though, hit the loose piece. Like, yeah, okay, the silver's loose, big deal. Hitting the silver, taking the knight, big deal. Oh, wait, wait a second. No, I can't take like this. It's not a dragon yet. But yeah, this attack from the front, hitting their heaviest piece, um, also making way for my knight to approach this direction, seems to be my strongest move. This looks very hard for them to play against. Um, so yeah, I think I played a good attack here. This is yeah, this lance drop, this patient move, ended up being perhaps the best move. Um, although, let's not forget about this. So now if we played it this way, hello. This time we haven't committed the knight to here. This knight could actually jump and start making threats toward our king. So, and then after the knight jumps, like, they could take the silver, and, like, stuff could get interesting. So, yeah, if I changed up this move order a bit, uh, well, not only that, but the pawn defends here. Like, the knight wasn't doing anything. This pawn does a double duty. So, yeah, this knight interposition, allowing this kind of defense, would force me to do something other than rook drop 6-1. Um... 
what I would do, I'm not sure. During the game, I was thinking of putting another Rook on file 5 here and trying to blast this from the front, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I've messed up my attack earlier, so this is not so easy anymore. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do. Engines will have fun reviewing this game, that's for sure. Um, yeah, actually, probably after this night drop. So, I commented how a night drop back here doesn't do anything, right? One could make a similar claim that the night drop all the way up here, that all that this does is prevent my lance from taking, right? So, if one were to make such a claim, and one were concerned about knight takes silver, just play patient move. Defend this point. Defend this point. And, like, okay. This suddenly becomes a very patient game, right? Except that their castle is still collapsing. And I have a rook and a gold general in hand. Wait, let me count material, because I'm curious now. Silver, silver, gold, gold in hand. Promoted knight, knight, knight. So they've got both bishops. We've got a promoted knight. Um, and we've got both rooks. So yeah. Uh, pawn count. They've got the pawn advantage. So. Yeah, material wise, it's pretty level for this instant. Um, but, like, yeah, all of their pieces are stretched to the limit here. There's, I've given back enough material to make the game interesting. I probably shouldn't have done all that, but at this point, yeah, that's not going to be an easy game for them. Um, but yeah, they'll have to play pawn drop 1-5 at some point, with the pawn and the gold defending each other. Which makes me back up and wonder... Oh no, okay, so the reason I couldn't drop the rook earlier is because I didn't have the rook. So that's why I take it here. Um, yeah, this bishop drop forking the rook and the pawn... Uh, led to some interesting complications. So maybe I'm fixating too much on that. Like, the bishop hitting here, I get it. Makes sense you'd want to hit the head of my king. Uh, especially while I don't have time to move my silver just yet. It makes sense that's a good timing, but also I'm, like, debating this. So, I see wanting to react to this threat. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's very natural to want to get out of that. Um, and the bishop drop seems to force my rook off this row, which seems to, like, prevent this pawn promotion threat. Um, yeah. Wow. Interesting. This is just one thing after another, but... I'm just trying to find some kind of recourse, or some resource for them. They've split their castle in this very difficult to defend shape, and I just find it amazing. Like, how brittle this ended up being. Even when you add the bishop to it, that didn't seem to fix all the problems. You can't just throw more pieces at a problem to solve it. Unless you have a lot of them. Um, oh, so I keep mentioning how this night drop everywhere that happens is not doing something useful. Um, with that in mind, maybe the right idea was to drop the knight somewhere useful. That might have been useful. Um... 
I'm not sure how I'd react to this. Yeah. That's clever. I guess at some point it would dawn on me, like, okay, I still want to have control of this file. I still want to promote, but it's not so easy to do. And here, I'm not sure if they keep the bishop or if they sack it. Um, if they keep the bishop, they can drop the pawn here and I guess sack the bishop in just a second. But, um, hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, they to slow down my attack, this is necessary. Unless they drop back here. And just admit that they're going to give me a gold general. But yeah, they could do this. This would slow the attack down by one move. And then give them time. If I choose to take here, then they have time to like drop this. and Stuff gets a little complicated. Um, that's if I take this. So the onus is on me to find another good move here. I don't know. Maybe finally we deliver on this threat, now that they don't have a pawn in hand. But now their knight defends this, so like, what's the point? Hmm. Yeah, no, actually this looks best. The idea being this. So, yeah, to stop this advance, they can't just drop the bishop anymore to stop. Well, they could, but, um, yeah, maybe. Ah, <sighs> no, if they drop the bishop, I could probably take the gold and things get, exp well, no. And bishop drop looks interesting. I keep saying they can't do it, and then saying, well, no, they might be able to. Yeah, they probably can. Um, so. Anyway. Yeah, this is a sharp game. Did we mention that? I think we did. But yeah, there's a lot of fighting moves to make here for both sides. And... Thankfully, I found some good fighting moves here. So yeah, they can continue trying to hold on to the... Well, no, they really can't. I say this gold is defended, so like... Yeah, the conclusion, by the way, is that. And if they take here, we can retake. So rather than see that, we just concede the game here. Yeah, wow. Alright, so that concludes uh the all-american summer shogi tournament thanks for watching i hope we all enjoyed this series um yeah thanks to synchro for coordinating this tournament and all the players for being very good sports scheduling their games and allowing us to get this great event rolling um uh, yeah thanks to those who had time for post-game analysis and those who just had time to play the games Honestly, finding the time can be hard. Well, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.